Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook 103. Our previous episode featured the remaining heroes leaving Fort Myers to the Katorian Sphere for passage on a ship. Bulger, the former sailor, felt that getting on a ship would get them back to Phoenix faster and safer. With the group in agreement, they headed into the settled lands of Eastern Fartook. After half a day's ride, the party learned of some more gray cloaks causing problems locally. Cabe Silvertongue, still reeling from the loss of Karina, interacted with the farmer and offered to deal with the situation. We rejoin them now as the tavern patrons look quizzically at the half elf. <coughs> <coughs> so, you're telling me you want to deal with these jerks and don't like them? inquired the farmer to the bard. Silently, Cabe nodded one time. And you're going to give me gold to tell you where they were headed? Again, the half-elf's head dipped. The farmer grunted in amusement and replied that two had a deal. Cabe returned his weapon to its scabbard and withdrew a handful of coins as promised and spilled them across the table. The farmer gathered around with his friends and gasped in amazement with the one picking up a coin and biting it with his teeth. Mister, they're headed to the archives of Steinhauser, about an hour away. Something about some information that the monks have at that location? The great cloaks look pretty pissed that there are more of them than you, exclaimed the farmer. Directions, replied the very grim and determined bard. The farmer's associate, Boris, stepped up and gave a rather detailed explanation as to where the monastery could be located. Fargus dropped a few more coins for the waitress as the others stood up from the table and joined their associate. Kate put out his hand and thanked the two men for their cooperation before walking out the door without a word. The rest of the group quickly followed as well. Mounting their horses, the group sped off to the southeast in search of their foes. Five minutes into the quickened journey, Lady Irena caught up to the Grim Bard and complained loudly at his insistence for revenge. She peppered him about sticking to the original plan and getting back to Phoenix until Cabe yanked on the reins of his horse for a prompt stop. The others caught up and formed a semicircle around the pair. Biting his lower lip and shaking his head, the exasperated Bard gathered his thoughts and displayed a look of anger in his eyes. <coughs> look! he began. We are still going to Phoenix, but I will tell you this now, and in no uncertain terms. Any chance I get to deal with these rogue knights, I will. I am not giving them a break. I am not giving them quarter. These assholes wander the countryside bullying people to take what does not belong to them. They took Karina from us, and now it is my time. My time for vengeance. If you do not wish to accompany me, I will not try and stop you from leaving. These gray cloaks are a scourge. They are a blight to all decent folk. I, for one, am tired of their arrogant attitudes. These people want to pick on people? They can pick on me. I'll happily go to my grave dealing with these scum. With Cabe and Irena staring at each other, the tension was broken with a low whistle from Bulger, the squat gnome. Turning to Fargus, the former sailor pointed out to Cabe and pointed out that he wanted to go ten to one with these jerks. Fargus looked down in disbelief at Bulger as he apparently wanted to make fun of the half-elf who turned away from the mage to angrily stare at the shortest companion. Bulger scratched his neck and returned the gaze to the bard. Laddie? If you think you're going to go in and wander the, around and try and deal with them yourself, you haven't been paying attention. We are all in this together. That is the only way we're going to win. 
Kay blinked several times and was completely caught off guard at the retort. Bolger, sensing a tune of attitude, felt a bit smug but quickly regained his composure. He explained to the party that he was more than happy to die with any single one of them, but would prefer it to be many years from now, preferably in a bed or a tavern. Warning the bard that rash behavior would spell doom against the rogue knights, he urged him to clear his head and fight smarter with his head and not with his heart. Cabe exhaled deeply and nodded in agreement. <sighs> I'm sorry. I, I was rash. He apologized to the rest of the group and explained that he had acted rashly and pointed out that taking on the Grey Cloaks should be a group decision. The group sat in silence for several moments before Sister Elaine spoke up. <clears throat> I think we all agree with you, Cabe, and with you too, Bulger. None of us have any love for these lowlifes, and we have to do this with tact and discipline. There is still a chance that this group isn't looking for us. If that is the case, we should have the element of surprise. I am not in favor of simply murdering these individuals without due cause. Fargus snickered and pointed out that he hardly thought the Grey Cloaks would listen to reason, but agreed to let her try her approach first. Lady Irena concurred with the large man, but also agreed to let the Reverend Daughter give peace a chance. Cabe was far less enthusiastic, but pointed out that the group had outvoted him, and he would comply with their wishes. The party then returned into the direction of the archives. After a while of traveling, they climbed a small rise and overlooked a small valley with a tranquil river running through it. Farm fields surrounded an adobe-esque looking building near the river about an eighth of a mile away. A gasp escaped Sister Lane as the group noticed carnage in the meadow below. Mounted knights were chasing down monks in brown robes and slashing at them with blades against these unarmed men. One knight was attempting to set fire to the building and several unattended horses indicated that more knights were in the immediate vicinity. The group spurred their horses forward at the site and the cleric led the charge, yelling out to her associate, Screw these guys! She and Bolger veered to the right and headed after one knight that had just cut a monk's head off. Fargus and Lady Irena went left after another pair while Cabe Silvertongue headed right for the building and the man with the torch. Bolger gave out a gnomish war cry as he and the cleric closed on their opponent. Caught off guard, the knight was knocked out of his saddle with a crushing blow from Sister Elaine's mace as the lagging gnome allowed his horse to trample the fallen man. Sister Elaine jumped from her horse and went to the fallen monk, but quickly realized that too much blood had already poured out from the savage neck wound that left his head dangling from some sinewy tissue. Bolger spun around quickly and returned to the fallen gray cloak, who lashed out at the sailor's mount, causing it to buck and throw the gnome off. Grabbing his bloody blade, the knight moved quickly towards Bolger, who was attempting to get up. Seeing the warrior, he grabbed a clump of dirt and flung it at the man's face. The knight's attempt to knock it out of midair failed and he was momentarily blinded. The delay gave a chance for Bolger to regain his feet and yell for help from Sister Elaine. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening. <laughs>